Welcome back, YouTubers. This is Omar from Near Mint Condition, and today I'm going to do a part two of my comprehensive Amazing Spider Man in oversized hardcover and omnibus format reading order. So please stay tuned. And welcome back. So, again, I want to remind everybody that this is just Amazing Spider Man in oversized hardcover and omnibus edition. Yes, you are absolutely right. There are no omnibuses on this. And that's ridiculous, right? Because we're going from 2001 until 2018. So, what's going on? Well, we do have one coming, and I'll get to that in a minute. We also have this giant gap after the now solicited Ben Riley Omnibus Volume 1, all the way up until 2001. So, we're talking 96 to 2001. Well, most of that stuff has been collected in trade paperbacks. And then we'll have another gap that I'll talk about here later. But we're going to kick this off with J. Michael Straczynski's Spider-Man, Best of, Volume 1. That's how they were collecting these books. Um, they were just putting a bunch of amazing Spider-Mans together, and they decided to kick it off with Straczynski's run, number 30. So this collects Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 2, number 30 through... 36 and then tangled web four through six and peter parker spider-man 36 and for some reason ultimate team up six through eight it does have the amazing talent of john romina jr i really love this stuff here this is the stuff that's inked by scott Hanna, i believe so it's a lot cleaner it's not thick like klaus jansen's inks but i really love this stuff this is the stuff that kind of introduces us to the new mythos and the spider token and a whole new cast of characters and new villains that kind of kicked the shit out of Spider-Man. This is some great stuff. If you've never read this, this is one of probably one of my favorite places to tell people to start jumping on and read Spider-Man. And it also has the classic issue number 36, which had the black cover, and it is the 9-11 issue. And if you've never read this, it's, it's pretty moving. I remember when this issue came out soon afterwards. thought it was pretty interesting that they decided to release it because they hardly mix comic books with real life events. Every once in a while, they do, and this worked wonderfully. And then, of course, this Tangled Web stuff. There's some good stories in here by Greg Rucka and Carrie Andrews. And some of this Tangled Web, of course, has been collected now in the Tangled Web Omnibus. The stuff from Spectacular Spider-Man has never been collected ever. And that is all for that. And then we have this ultimate Marvel team up that has nothing to do with the 616 universe. And we'll keep going here. And this is volume two. That's a cover by Jason Pearson, if I'm not mistaken. And volume two collects Amazing Spider-Man 37 through 45. There is the Nuff Set issue. I love these issues. No words. It's so great. This also collects the Peter Parker... Return of the Goblin storyline, which was in Peter Parker Spider-Man 44 through 47. And more issues of Tangled Web. I think 10 and 11 are in here. So probably another reason why I didn't get on that Tangled Web run. And here's the Spectacular Spider-Man, or I'm sorry, Peter Parker storyline. The Death in the Family, The Return of the Goblin. And art by Humberto Ramos. And the story is by Paul Jenkins. This is the first time... Humberto Ramos got to deal with Spider-Man. Oh, this is the Carrie Andrews story in the back. This one's pretty good, actually. It's about kids playing with Spider-Man toys. And here's this awesome Darwin Cook story from Tangled Web. So it's got some really good stories from the Tangled Web's book. But if you already have the Omnibus, no need for these. So speaking of Omnibus... Actually, let me talk about this first, and then I'll talk about the Omnibus. And here is Volume 3. This collects issues 46 through 58. And we go back to the original numbering system, and this is where the crap gets confusing, and we go back to issue 500. Continuing the remaining of the JMS run. And speaking of JMS, that's the omnibus that got recently announced. So the omnibus is going to collect the Amazing Spider-Man 30 through 58, then the renumbered 500 through 514, and issue 509, the director's cut. That's what the new omnibus is going to collect. That's for the first time. That's one of the most sought after omnibuses. So the reason I was showing you those other hardcovers first is because all those other Peter Parker issues, Spectacular Spider-Man issues, and Tangled Web issues will not be included in an omnibus. The only way to have them is with these best of hardcovers. Now these best of hardcovers have been out of print for a while, but you can still kind of find them on the cheap side if you look online. Yeah, I would say anywhere from like 
honestly five dollars to thirty five dollars i've seen them at shows for half off but now that the omnibus has been announced they are going to go down in price and i can guarantee you'll be able to find them cheaper if you want those other stories if you just want the jms stuff then i just suggest you stick with the upcoming omnibus so this is volume three let's get to volume four and here we have volume four now this collects issues 501 through 514 and still penciled by john romita jr and i think this is the end of his run and this also collects i think if i'm not mistaken the beginning of mike del title jr stuff which is among one of the most hated storylines in the history of spider-man and that is sin's past yeah this is the sin's past story uh if you've never read it i mean if you don't care i can tell you what it is Apparently, Norman Osborn and Gwen Stacy had a secret affair, and they had a set of twins. The original idea was JMS wanted to make the twins Peter Parker's kids, but instead he made them Norman Osborn's kids because editorial mandate, which makes absolutely no sense. So these kids were had the goblin serum in them, so they grew fast, and now they're adults, and they're after... Spider-Man and the story is ass. That's all I can say about that. It turned away a lot of old Spider-Man readers. And here's the final best of hardcover. This is volume five. And this collects Amazing Spider-Man 515 to 524. Finishing out the best of hardcover editions. And as you probably noticed, the last three only had Amazing Spider-Man stories. It was only the first two that collected the Tangled Web and Peter Parker stuff. So yeah, just straight up 515 to 524. Not that many issues. Probably the slimmest book in the Best of series. Art by Mike Del Tato Jr. And oh yeah, this is the New Avenger stuff when Spidey joined the New Avengers. Tying it into that Brian Michael Bendis run. And most of the art here is by... Mike Del Tato Jr. But some of it is done by Mark Brooks. Let's see if we can find some of that. So I'll flip through here earlier. It looks like the flashbacks are done by Mark Brooks in this particular issue. All right. So let's move on to the next one. By the way, I put Spider-Man there. That is the Marvel Knight Spider-Man by Mark Miller. It has nothing to do with Amazing Spider-Man. It was just kind of a placeholder because something important happens in there. I think it is the death of Eddie Brock, and that's why I put it there. But that's kind of where it belongs in case you want to add it to your oversized hardcover reading order of Spider-Man. It is does not contain any Amazing Spider-Man issues, and I don't even know if Marvel considers it canon anymore. The other, the probably first big official crossover, probably since the days of the Clone Saga, this collects Amazing Spider-Man 525 to 528, which were written by Straczynski, and then Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man set 1 through, f one through 4. Those were written by Peter David. And then Reginald Hud Hudlin, the guy that wrote Black Panther, wrote the Marvel Knights Spider-Man 19 through 22. The series that I was just talking about with Mark Miller. It's just a crossover with the vampire Moreland and he comes and eats Spider-Man's eye and Spider-Man gets a new suit and he's getting new powers and he's got horrible art by Pat Lee. But the issues that are done in Friendly Spider-Man I, friendly Neighborhood are done by Mike Waringo, one of my favorite artists who passed away. And then, of course, the phenomenal Mike Del Tato Jr. I think one of my favorite things were the... And I never fall for these, but the variant covers were awesome in this series. Collected here, all the way in the back. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these stories are printed in trade paperback format, too. And then, instead of simplifying it with a numbering system and keep going with... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. After the other, we get Civil War Spider-Man. And this one collects Amazing Spider-Man 529 through 538. Sensational Spider-Man 28 through 34. Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man 11 through 16. And that is it. Art by Ron Garney and others. Cashing in on that Civil War crossover name. Nothing really happening in these issues. I can't remember. Oh, wait, that is art by Clayton Crane. Good lord. I do love that dude's artwork. And it looks like Angel Medina. I think they just retell the events that were happening during Civil War when he got the suit. And leading up to the issue where he betrays Tony Stark. 
Yeah, but this kind of... Oh, it looks like Sean Chan. This kind of sets up the next story arc, which is the Back in Black, which also cashes in on another thing, which I'll talk about here in a second. And it looks like Todd Knock on artwork. Yeah, it's just pretty much Spider-Man using that Iron Spider outfit that Tony Stark gave him. And all the cover sketches and variant covers in the back. So, speaking of cashing in, Spider-Man, Back in Black, Volume 1. Uh, nothing. Has nothing to do with Venom or anything like that. They were just literally cashing in on the fact that Spider-Man by Sam Raimi, Part 3, had the black outfit. So they decided to cash in on that and make the storyline where after Peter Parker revealed that he was Spider-Man, the Kingpin sets up somebody, to an assassin, not somebody, to go and shoot Aunt May because he figured out that's how he would hurt him. And actually, the story's pretty cool. I just, and I've always liked Peter Parker in the black outfit, even though he swore up and down he would never wear it again after it tormented Mary Jane. But this ends up collecting Amazing Spider-Man 539 to 543, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man 17 through 23, and the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man annual number one. Again, more Straczynski, joined by Peter David. And that's all in this book. Now, this is part two, and... That literally has no Amazing Spider-Man issues. That just collects Sensational Spider-Man 35 through 40 and Annual Number 1 and then like a bunch of one-shots and specials. Nothing really, but the spines just look so nice together. That's why I own it. And that kind of finishes out the JMS run in Oversized Hardcover. And then there was one more day, which I assume they refused to collect in Oversized Hardcover. But I guess we'll see when Volume 2 of the Omnibus is solicited because we know there's going to be another volume. They're pretty much just taking the ultimate collections of JMS and trade paperback and putting them together. After he leaves, after 545, one more day, everything starts over with brand new day. Then big time starts and we don't get any kind of hardcovers. There are a bunch of small size hardcovers and trade paperbacks and of course ultimate co collections and things like that. But no oversized hardcovers until we get to the next crossover event which is spider island now this collects amazing spider-man 666 that's right we have a huge gap between 543 and 666 of amazing spider-man being an oversized hardcover over 100 issues so 666 to 673 and then venom 6 through 8 spider-man deadly foes spider island deadly foes of spider-man that's what that is uh, and then some spotlight issues, the infested prologues from Amazing Spider-Man 659 through 660 and 662 and six, through 665. Yeah, actually, I enjoy this crossover. It's where everybody turns into a giant spider. I thought it was pretty cool. And this is co-written by Dan Slott and Rick Remender. Rick Remender doing the Venom issues. The art was Umberto Ramos. I love that outfit which I think might be in the new movie, Far From Home. We don't know yet. It also has art by Barry Kitson and Lee Garbett. But, yes. Now, we only have two <laughs> during this time of big time hardcover, oversized hardcovers. The other one's really slim, as you can tell. And that is Ends of the Earth. This kind of futuristic world where Doc Ock is about to rule the world, of course. And this just collects Amazing Spider-Man 682 to 687, and then Avenging Spider-Man number 8. And also the one-shot Ends of the Earth. And there's a new spider armor. I love when Spider-Man gets these new costumes. I'm, st I'm still a sucker for those things. Let's see. And something. Well, one of the big characters dies in this. Spoilers, only to return later. And it kind of sets up a little bit of the events that happen... Well, that will happen that leads up to Superior Spider-Man. So it looks like art mainly by Stefano Caselli and Umberto Ramos and Matthew Clark here towards the end. Yeah, I, I remember his art from Outsiders. Now, let's get to the confusing part of Spider-Man if you're not already confused. There was a Spider Island companion, by the way, but that just had a bunch of one-shots that had nothing to do with Amazing Spider-Man or the main storyline. So why did I put Superior Spider-Man here? Well, because it contains issues of Amazing Spider-Man. Superior Spider-Man 1, the storyline starts off in Amazing Spider-Man. 
And so the first volume, this one here, collects issues 698 to 700 and then Superior Spider-Man 1 through 5. And honestly, this is, to me, my favorite Dan Slott storyline. If you've never read Superior Spider-Man, it is awesome. Pretty much a dying Doc Ock switches bodies with Peter Parker and he becomes the Superior Spider-Man. Peter Parker is trapped inside of a dying Doc Ock and he ends up dying. Oh, it's all these variants here in the back. But don't worry. You know your boy's going to be back. And I love when they do these cover collections here. I'm not really going to highlight the other books other than tell you what's in them. Uh, Superior Spider-Man Volume 2 has 6 through 16. And then Superior Spider-Man Volume 3 has 17 through 31. But they don't have any issues of Amazing. Then... Yes, spoilers. Peter Parker is back as Spider-Man. And now he's back in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1. Another Volume 1. But believe it or not, this is the proper place for it. Right after Superior Spider-Man. Dan Slott back in writing. And we have Humberto Ramos back on art. This collects 1 and then I think 1.1 through 1.5. I know it's silly, but that's their numbering system. And then 2 through 6. And annual number 1. Some nice Alex Ross covers. I think the point one issues and point two issues were done by Ramon Perez. Yeah, this guy's art was pretty solid. While I didn't enjoy it as much as I did Superior Spider-Man, this was still pretty fun. And that is volume one. Then that leads us to volume two. This is volume two and this collects Amazing Spider-Man 7 through 18. Superior Spider-Man 32 through 33. Yeah, they brought the title back for this Spider-Verse event, which I'll talk about here in a second. I've always liked the Superior Spider-Man outfit. I think it's so badass. And then the free comic book day that's got like a flip book with Guardians of the Galaxy from 2014. And I think that's all that's collected in here. It's kind of weird because it collects aspects of the Spider-Verse where Morlin and all these other vampires are going around killing different Spider-Mans from different dimensions. The story's really wicked, but the way that it's collected is just so damn messed up. And I'll talk about that here in a second when I get to the damn Spider-Verse actual hardcover that makes no sense. So like I mentioned, this collects Amazing Spider-Man 7 through 18, and then Superior Spider-Man 32 through 33. So keep that in mind when I talk about the next book. Spider-Verse, the hardcover. The most cluster fuck of a collection I've seen in a long time. Mainly because of the way that it's laid out. And mainly because of the things that are not collected in it. So, you have this giant crossover where they tell you what part is what in the index. But that's not the way that it's collected. This is one of my biggest gripes about this. You have to flip back and forth, back and forth. But anyway, let me tell you what this collects. So, this collects... Amazing Spider-Man 7 through 15, keeping in mind that Volume 2 already collected 7 through 18. Superior Spider-Man 32 through 33, again. Spider-Verse 1 through 2. Spider-Verse Team-Up 1 through 3. Scarlet Spiders 1 through 3. Spider-Woman 1 through 4. Spider-Man 2099 6 through 8. And then that free comic book day issue that I was talking about. What it doesn't contain for some damn reason is the Edge of the Spider-Verse comic collection where... Spider-Gwen first appears, probably the most breakout character of the entire damn series. And you don't even get to see her first appearance. She just kind of pops up in the storyline. And if you want to see her first appearance, you have to buy the trade paperback. Because there was not a companion of this. And the way that the story was reprinted, like I said, it, it is a cluster. It's a mess, and I don't know who mapped this book out, but I wish they had gotten somebody else to do it. Because you literally, like I said, have to flip back and forth, back and forth between issues. Um, and it doesn't stop there. All right. What's the harm in renumbering these things? I mean, really. So we have another number one. And this time is Amazing Spider-Man Worldwide. My copy happens to be signed by Dan Slott. It's a good guy. He This is his kind of last hoorah. And they restarted the story and the numbering again. Peter Parker is now more like a Tony Stark kind of character. And this collects Amazing Spider-Man 1 through 11. This would be, I believe, Volume 5 of Amazing Spider-Man. But that's the way it reads. It reads right after Spider-Verse or Volume 2 of Sp Amazing Spider-Man. That sounds so damn stupid. 
looks like Stuart Eminent is on art. And as I said, Dan Slott is still the head writer. This is his last huge storyline. He had been writing Amazing Spider-Man for about 10 years almost. If I'm not mistaken, some variant covers here in the back. And let's look at Worldwide number two. And here is Amazing Spider-Man Worldwide volume two. Kind of slim. And this collects issues 12 through 19 and the free comic book day from 2016 that had the Captain America flip story. This has R.B. Silva on art and Giuseppe Camuncoli. I actually dig the art in this book. And but by this point, the story was kind of okay. Worldwide isn't one of my favorite storylines. It's not until the end of the Worldwide that I actually start enjoying the Dan Slot run again. And now we'll look at Volume 3. Okay, so here is Volume 3, collecting Amazing Spider-Man 20 through 28 and annual number one now reading this you might be a little lost because some of these issues are part of the big clone conspiracy crossover that happened but not to worry marvel's got you covered they have collected that book in their own hardcover but sadly like the way they collected the spider-verse so Stuart eminent on art issues 20 through 28 and annual number one all right, so let's keep that in mind when we pull out this clone's conspiracy book. Keep it in mind that that collected issues 20 through 28. This collects issues 19 through 24. Also collecting the clone conspiracy 1 through 5 and clone conspiracy Omega. And Prowler 1 through 5 and then the material from the free comic book day like the other. And again, not printed in the reading order. But don't worry. Marvel has you covered because they tell you how to read it. Isn't that nice? They tell you what the reading order is. But for some damn reason, they don't print it in reading order. Sometimes I wish I could just rip these books apart and make my own custom bound books. I know that's first world problems, but I mean, you're paying 50, 60, 75 bucks for some of these books and I can't even print them in the proper order. <laughs> That's kind of ridiculous. Now, here's something else that aggravates me. So the final book that has been collected in oversized hardcover is the Amazing Spider-Man Red Goblin. You figured they might go ahead and finish out Worldwide and just call it Worldwide Volume 4. But no, they want to confuse the shit out of you and just call this Red Goblin. On top of that, they have also... <laughs> okay. Hold on. Let me, let me explain. So... In between Amazing Spider-Man Worldwide, that ends with issue number 28. So, there were other issues, though, between that and this. 29 through 32 and 789 to 793 have been orphaned. That means that they have not been collected in oversized hardcover. Leaving us with Red Goblin, which finishes out Dan Slott's run. Without the newly spider again, which he's kind of co-writing with Christos Gage. But this collects issue 794 to 801, and then annual number two. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, 792 and 93 were part of a crossover. The I think the Venom crossover. By the way, I actually really enjoyed this run. I really, really liked it. I know it's ridiculous, but when Norman Osborn gets the symbiote, the Carnage symbiote, and becomes the Red Goblin, that's actually kind of badass. And awesome, awesome art by Stuart Eminem, who is, I think, newly retired, or he's going to retire. Then you have art by Umberto Ramos and Caselli, if I'm not mistaken, and just a bunch of the people that kind of drew big time with Dan Slott come back to kind of finish out his run. Um, but yeah, a little aggravated that they orphaned some issues and they couldn't stick to one format. So if you want to have those, you have to get the trade paperback. I think volume seven of the trade paperback. And here is the variant covers. And ta-da. That finishes out 
part two of the amazing Spider-Man in oversized hardcover and omnibus format. And there you have it. That was it. That is my reading order as to why these books fit the way that they do. Don't forget that there is the first JMS omnibus coming out, I believe in January of 2019. I hope I was able to help you out and let you know where the stories belong and why these damn books go and start over with a number one. If this is your first time watching these videos, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you liked what you saw and don't forget to hit that like button again this was omar this has been a lot of fun and i'm probably going to keep doing these comprehensive reading orders so let me know in the comments down below what you like to see i've heard batman and of course i gotta finish my x-men one i promise that is coming but let me know what other books you'd like to see as long as i have them i'd be happy to do them and don't forget to check out our weekly show that comes out every thursday and don't forget to check out our live show old reader new reader where i'm joined with two lovely ladies and we have a live segment where we talk about the book that we have read coming up next is rachel rising and that is this thursday at 9 30 eastern standard time we'd love for you to join us and then next week we're back to our tuesday night schedule at eight o'clock eastern standard time with hellboy library edition volume one so this was Omar. Thank you very much. This has been a blast. Have a great day.